Grim. Level 5 upgrade. Today I'm going to be installing MIP drive shafts for the rear. These were donated to me by Crazy RC Kids. Thanks a ton, guys. Now, as you can see, these are polished. In fact, when I got these, they were a bit beat up and they were rusted, so I had to clean them up, treat them, and get all the rust off. But now they're ready to be assembled and put onto Grim. So let's go ahead and get these MIPs assembled. I'm going to go ahead and start off with the top of the drive shaft. Then I'm going to get one of these cylinders. Now you can see on one of the sides there is some threading. I had to put some thread locker in there because once I put the grub screw in there, we do not want it coming back out. Now I'm just going to go ahead and slide this through the center of the top and then I'm going to point the hole that goes right through the middle off to the side. Now I'm going to go ahead and get the top of the drive shaft and I'm going to slide that in position and hold it just like that. Now as you guys can see, this long pin has a flat side to it. This is going to have to face the side of the cylinder where the grub screw is going to be screwed into. So now I'm just going to go ahead and slide this right down the middle. Make sure it comes out the other side. And now I'm going to move this to the side. And then I'm going to insert a grub screw right there and it's going to hold that pin in place. With that grub screw in there, this whole thing is not going to be falling apart. However, I am going to have to get some grease and I'm going to have to grease this entire joint. It is one of those things that is required for you to do for the MIP drive shafts. Now, for the rest of it, it's the same exact process. You're just going to go ahead, grab the end piece, slide in a cylinder, put it into the part of the drive shaft you need to, slide in the bar, put in the grub screw, rinse and repeat three more times. Now that the dry shafts have been assembled, it's time to go ahead and attach them to the RC. So the first step is to go ahead and remove both rear tires by undoing the 4mm nut that holds them on. Once I take off the tire, you can see that I need to remove the wheel hex hub. I'm just going to use a flathead screwdriver and I'm just going to put it in between the hex hub and the axle carrier, turn it, and pop it right on off. After that, I need to remove this little axle pin by sliding it off to the side. And then there is also a Teflon washer on there that also has to come off. After that, I need to remove this top screw that holds on the camber link. Once you remove that screw, you can just go ahead and tilt the axle forward and then pull out the bottom of the drive shaft. When you do so, you'll realize that there is a Teflon washer on the inside. You're going to have to pull that off and then slide that on to the new MIP drive shaft. And now we can go ahead and slide this back through the axle carrier. Once it's through, I'm just going to go ahead and get the other Teflon washer, slide that on, push the little axle pin right through the axle, Make sure it's even on each side, and then I'm just going to snap on the wheel hex hub. So in order to remove the top of the dry shaft, I'm going to have to locate this grub screw that holds it onto the diff gear and unscrew it. Once you remove that grub screw, you can easily pull off the top of the dry shaft. And now we can go ahead and install the MIP. Now you'll see that there's a grub screw on each side of the output yoke. You're going to have to line up each one of those grub screws with a hole that goes through the output for the diff gear. Once the top is secure, all you have to do is line up the bottom and the top of the dry shaft slide it in and then just reattach the camber leak and put the tire back on and we are done. The process is identical for the other side. Here is before and here is after. Guys, check that out. With the MIPs polished and treated like that, they almost look like gunmetal, which makes it look all the more better. Thank you, Crazy RC Kids, for this awesome donation. But I am finally done with this upgrade. And that was Grimm's level 5 upgrade. Followed by this little small washer that is made out of Teflon, which isn't coming out very well. There we go. Once I may root, what the heck? <laughs> Can't get the stupid screw out. Ugh. Oh, this screw is driving me nuts. And then remove the bottom part of the axle carrier. That's not an axle carrier, guys. That would be a drive shaft. And I gotta remember when I'm saying that to call it a drive shaft. That would be a good start. Teflon washer on the inside of the axle carrier. On the axle. God dang it! Just shoot it.
to Kepler. Uh, that's a foreign language I just decided to make up, which pretty much is very foul, and I can't even translate it because it's just that bad. <laughs> Once you remove... Oh, wow, that looked weird. Once you unscrew it, all you have to do is pull it out the rest of the way. I guess not. <laughs> that's not an axle. Why am I obsessed with calling it an axle? I crumba. Once I line those up just right, I'm going to go ahead and tighten it down. I just had to drop it, didn't I? Yeah. Because dropping is what makes it nice and smooth. And yeah. I'm going to have to line up each one of those grub screws with the out hole. Wow. You're going to have to line those up with the single hole that goes through the drive output. The hole. Now you'll see that there's a grub screw on each side of the drive shift. If output yoke. Yeah, well, I don't know why I pushed record. I mean, I was setting up. <laughs>